Hey there, wedding photographers. If you are like me and you're a natural light photographer, you don't love these things, but they are so necessary. And sometimes all these buttons can look super confusing, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to set up these flashes, only explaining the things you really need to know to use them well and use them professionally in a way that you'll understand. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. I am so glad that you found my YouTube channel. This is a place where I help photographers build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in in the behind the scenes of our everyday life. Before we dive into talking about these guys, I wanted to first say that I don't love flash, but I do know it and I can use it. And I know how to handle these things in a way that I can get a certain style that I want consistently at every single wedding. But this is just my way. And so the way that I do flash, the way I set up my flashes, it works for me. It's consistently a great way to use the Canon 600 EX RT2 flashes, but it, again, there's so many different ways that you could use these things. And so I want to make sure that you know, like this is my way. It doesn't mean it's the way that everyone has to use their flashes. And there's probably things um, about these flashes that I don't use that I could. And there's probably things that I use that maybe not everyone wants to use. Okay. So I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. So as a natural light photographer, I don't love flash. And I really, really didn't like flash before I owned these. The reason why these are different than what I used to use is because these have radio transmitters built into them, which means that back in like 2012, 2014, during that season of my business, I was trying to get my flashes to talk to one another using radio transmitters like a pocket wizard. Um, and while there are ways to make sure that that consistently works, I always struggled with it. And it was always so frustrating to me. So I love these flashes because I don't need to have an external um, radio transmitter in order to make these talk to one another. It's built in, it's simple, it's easy, and that's why I love them. So one thing to know about these flashes is that everything that I'm gonna show you about setting up this flash is not a setup process that you're gonna do every single time you pull it out of your camera bag at a wedding reception. Once you have these settings in place, for the most part, unless something gets knocked or adjusted by accident, you really can turn them on and you can start shooting. You're going to have one flash that serves as the master flash. And the master flash is in charge of telling all the other flashes, off-camera flashes that you may have. We normally use two. Uh, at a wedding reception. Um, those are called the slave flashes. The master flash controls the actions of the slave flashes around the room. So what that means is that the master flash, once you have it all set up and my other two flashes are on their stands on the other side of the room, I don't ever have any reason to go over to these flashes and adjust anything because I can control both of them and their settings, their power um, from my master flash, which is awesome. So it's very simple once it's set up, I just have to make sure this is the flash that's on my camera, the master flash. Um, and you can set up any flash to be the the master flash, but Michael and I try to keep it simple. Um, we have labeled our flashes like flash one, two, three, and four. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is uh, I always start with setting up the master flash first. Okay. So I have the flash that I'm going to use for my master. I'm going to turn it on right here. One thing that I want to make sure that when I'm setting up the flashes initially is to check um, the ID of the flash to make sure that the ID on this flash and this flash and any other flashes that are going to be synced to this master flash are the same. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to go to menu and that's menu one, this is menu two. And right at menu two, the second option in is ID. And so the ID of this flash is 0001. So I need to go to this guy, turn it on, find ID, and it's marked the same. Something else you wanna make sure that you check is that you check the channel. So um, we have had situations where we have had to change the channel during a reception um, because we are on the same channel as maybe something that the DJ is using that was wireless. Or um, when we film KG All Access episodes and we have a wireless mic, sometimes we've found that we're interfering with our signal and so we change the channel in order to ensure that we're not we're not having interference from a channel issue, if that makes sense. So um, there could be situations where you need to change your channel at a, at a wedding reception where something's interfering. Um, but for the most part, when you're setting up your flashes initially, the main thing to pay attention to is going to channel right here. And when I click channel, the channel is highlighted in the top right corner. So I'm currently on channel 14 on this flash. I'm gonna go to this flash and click channel and it's on channel 14 as well. All right, so the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that this is actually set up to be the master. Um, and when you do this, you actually set it up so that these um, two flashes and any other flashes you're using have the ability to be linked. So you're gonna click um, this little, it looks like two arrows going opposite direction. That's the link button. I don't know if it's called link, but that's what we call it. So when you press the link button, it gives you options. You wanna make sure that you are clicking the master with kind of like the antenna looking icon, uh, which means that you are using this flash and you're connecting to other flashes through radio transmission instead of 
of the old school way of using the actual flash power, the flash burst to connect and talk to the other flashes. So you want to make sure you're on this. And you'll notice once I click that and click out, then all of a sudden my link turns green and this is turned green because this is my slave flash. When you click this, it was already set to slave. So as soon as the slave recognizes in the general area that there's a master slave to connect to, it automatically connected itself. So they are linked. That's all you have to do. Okay, so now we have our flash is linked, we have our master, and we have our slave. Um, we are going to make sure that we change the mode so we have complete control over how much flash power we're actually using every time we fly, fire a shot. So what we're going to do in order to make that happen is we're going to take our master flash and we're going to click mode and we are going to switch it over to M, which stands for manual. So then we look at our main menu screen and you'll see ratio. It's the second option over. We're going to click that until we see A, B, and C. So what ratios are doing, it's giving us the ability to set a letter or a group to each individual off-camera flash. And so we can control the power of that off-camera flash individually from the back of our master flash. So once you have your ratios set up here on your master, you want to make sure that your slave is set up so that each one is um, set up as a group that is listed on the screen of your master. So I have A, B, and C here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click uh, GR on the main menu screen on my slave flash, which is stands for group, and you'll switch it to, I'm going to make this one B. So you may notice that on the back of your slave flash that you don't see necessarily the settings, the flash power, or the mode from the master reflecting on this screen, and that's because sometimes you won't see it until you take a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and do a test shot here. So now that I've done a test shot, you can see that it's set to manual, and it's also matching the same amount of flash power as B on the master. So something else you might wonder about, it's not um, something that I worry about or use much in my business at all. When I'm shooting receptions, I'm not worrying about the zoom uh, capability on my flash. I keep everything always at 24 millimeters. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because it's something that we do get questions about, but I keep it at 24 millimeters. Last but not least, something else that may come in handy if you are wondering, all right, Caitlin, what if I just want to use my off-camera flash, um, but I don't want the power um, from my on-camera flash to fire, I just need to use it as a transmitter, then you can go to your uh, master flash and down on the bottom left corner, this button is going to make your flash fire or make it not fire. And so that's an easy way to turn it off and on and to be able to use your off-camera flash solely by itself, but still use this to transmit and send that signal for your off-camera flash. So just to recap, we talked about first, you wanna make sure that your flash ID is the same for all of your flashes. Then you wanna make sure that your flashes are on the same channel. Then you wanna make sure that your flash is set up to master and slaves. Then you wanna make sure that you are setting up your flash to be in the mode that you prefer. So for me, that's manual. And then you wanna make sure that you set up your ratios so that you can have control over the power of your individual flashes. You wanna make sure that they represent a group listed on the back of your master, so A, B, or C for me, because I only use three. Um, and so you wanna do that for each one of your slave flashes. So then the last thing you have to do is to look on the back of your master flash and you can control the power of all of your slave flashes and you can begin shooting. And you have complete control from one spot in the reception area um, to be able to get the look you want and the style you want from your off-camera flash system. So hopefully that's helpful. If you're like me, you don't love flash, but you wanna know how to use it. You wanna know how you can be in control of it and not feel overwhelmed at a wedding reception. This is a great tutorial how to set it up to a place where you can control your flash power. These flashes, when they came into my life, into our business, it made me feel so much more comfortable using flash. and It made me understand it so much more. And I hope that for you, after watching this and playing around with the flashes that you may have and that you're about to use, that you feel more empowered um, and more capable and ready to tackle them at your next reception. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>